All right. Well, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. It was 69 and sunny today, which is well above normal for Chicago. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you were at the same temp today, right? I was, yeah. I was at 68, 69. It's supposed to be like this all week. It's supposed to be like 73 in like three days. Oh, nice. Well, we're, it's Tuesday today, and I think next week, Monday or Tuesday, it's supposed to snow. <laughs> so that's how it is this time of year. You just get a little bit of everything. Just a little taste of the glory. Yeah, yeah. What would you do today, man? Uh, well, I had to work. Okay. Uh, but after work, uh, went to the park with the kids, rode my bike with the trailer, put my daughter in there, and we went to this park. Uh, not far away that she likes to go to one of those like bicycle trailers yeah in the back you awesome. tow behind and dude yeah it was gusty as hell today <laughs> <laughs> things like a parachute man 30 mile an hour <laughs> winds i'm pedaling dude you got oh, a parachute man. behind you that's what it is yeah. it's crazy yeah so. but she's loving it she's yeah loving oh it. yeah yeah cool, man. <laughs> how about you um woke up kind of started late today's my day off day off um started a little late started around lunchtime because um my wife's brother was over and we we're kind of hanging ten with him for a little bit before him and my wife took off to go buy a bunch of plants i'm gonna go plant shopping um and then i started uh as you can see i have space again yeah trying to space back yep trying has gone the 750's gone so um i'm going through a uh Honda Magna V4 valve adjustment or valve check right now on the membership. So I shot, I actually shot some videos, which I'm excited about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I shot video on that today. Um, might need to pull one of the cams, uh, which is very surprising because it's got like 2,800 miles on this thing and the intakes are tight. They're like, they're like supposed to be like six thousands. They're like five, uh, four, so they're real tight. But to be determined. Um, but yeah, I started doing video on that, and then I shot uh, some uh, intro video. So for the series, we're gonna do one of three fifty. Um, so I kind of shot a video on like bringing it up to date. Like this is where we're at right now, and then I have all the content I have to go through to start putting some videos out for that so i can bring everybody up to speed at where the 350 is at where the 350 is at right now and then we'll kind of hit the ground running and start shooting from there so nice. um did all that helped my wife when she came home helped her plant some pots or pot some plants actually pots and plants um cool what about that what's that first bike uh we're looking this one at? yeah so after this one after we get that one started and get some start making some moves this is what I'm also working on. This is a KZ 400. So it's already got like, it's when, it, when I got this bike, this is pretty much what it looked like, believe it or not, but um, no headlight, no. So I got like new fresh bars on it, got some new controls on it. I'm deciding if I want to run like an old school, like eighties rectangle front headlight, or if I want to do like, like the newer modern looking double eye, People are putting all different types of lights on them. So sure. I'm trying to kind of decide with that. Um, I'm going to put, this is a, a fender off of another bike. I'm going to cut this out and make it look kind of tracky. Um, but this is just, another, oh, I got nice VM carbs on this one too. So I'm building that for, for someone else. Nice. So that's the little tracker I'm also building with it. So two trackers in, in the bunch. Um, but yeah, so I'll actually be doing content on that too, hopefully. Cool. Yeah. Well, did you get that package? Bro. Was yours cool enough to come in an Amsoil box? No, <laughs> I, I, just, I just got a brown box. <laughs> so this was in the fridge, right? I just put oh, it yeah. right in the fridge. Yeah, same thing. He was like, hey, I want to play a game. I was like, what's the game? She's like, why is there oil in the fridge? <laughs> it says V-twin oil change on it. Nice. Yeah, so this is uh, from Paul. From Paul. In Missouri. Is that Missouri? Yeah, M-O, yeah. Missouri. 
or Montana. Uh, I don't know. It's from Mo, wherever that is. Are we that what's, bad? What state? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I. What's what's Michigan? Am I? Okay. Are you Maybe Montana is MT? <laughs> so it's got to be Missouri, right? Uh, um, this is embarrassing. Come on, you watch the Ozarks, man. Dude. Ozark. M- oh. State. <laughs> Missouri. Yeah, dude. All right, cool. You got it. You nailed it. All right. So Paul from Missouri sent us, mailed us beer. Mailed it. Let's let's uh, let's open this up, man. Got our let's do it. I think you said it was the same beer. So it better it better be cold, man. It was in there for two days. Yeah. Mine was just in here for about six. So there's a chance that it might not be, but let's <sighs> Is it, we're, we're doing one of those unboxing videos that are super popular on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, we got like a mix six. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, mine's cold. Yeah, mine's definitely cold. So this is awesome. Dude, what an amazing present to open. Let's see, we got some Boulevard Tank 7 American Saison. The calling double IPA. The sixth. Glass, uh, ooh, it's a quadruple. There you, dude, that's a that's gonna be a heavy hitter. Oh my god, man! <laughs> 10 10 2. <laughs> dude, quads are uh brutal. I don't think I've ever had a quad. Oh man, it's like a it's like a fine aged wine. Um, Munich style brown lager. That sounds good. And we got the pale ale, our original. From Bo- so this is all from Boulevard. Yeah, Boulevard, Boulevard, and then they got this can, uh, Belgian style Abbey. Oh, that's probably gonna be really good. This probably be my favorite one. All right. So what do you want to drink, man? We'll do it together. Uh. Oh man. It's tough, huh? Um. What are you in the mood for, or, or do you not care? I don't care. All right. Oh. Let's uh let's hit up this can. All right. The Belgian style Abbey Ale. Unless you want to do the quad, and we can just go straight for it. <laughs> Wait, you you've never had a quad, so let's do All that right. one. Let's do the quad. Yeah. <sighs> Shoot. Biting into my wood. Uh. Ah. Success. Paul. Here. This is this is my this is what I do. Nice. I gotta learn that trick. I just find something hard and bang it. Dude, Paul, thank you. Oh yeah. Lots of flavor, dude. Lots yeah, it's of flavor. Good. Yeah. Paul Jenkins coming to us with some with some uh, care packages, <laughs> medical medical care packages. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I've been wanting to open that for days now, man. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> waited a week. Oh man, that's good. It's just sometimes it's like the ten two is a lot. Like that's yeah. a lot. Like that's like a bottle of wine almost. Yeah. So the triples are a little bit less, usually they're like seven. You can get some low grade, but the taste of it is what's so unique. Yeah, no, that's really good. Cool, man. Paul, again, thank you so much. Yeah, you thanks guys, a lot. If you guys want to send us a beer to try from your local town, uh, we'd be more than happy to take it. You yeah, know? Um, just, just uh, hit us up at uh, askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. We'll respond with our addresses. Yeah. And this Absolutely. is kind of cool because I don't even have to leave my house, dude. I just... <laughs> It was cool. Just shove cool. boxes in my fridge. <laughs> so, 
So mm. you're a professional mechanic. You went to MMI and you got yeah. a degree, right? You got it on the wall somewhere, right? Well, somewhere. Yeah. I think I can do one better. What? Are you ready for this? Yes. This is from my buddy. Ah, old Ichiban. Bring in close. I, I can't read the first part of it. It says that it, it's from the International Certified Motorcycle Builders Association. <laughs> <laughs> Certified industry hero. Oh, dude, that is so cool. <laughs> it's from Ichiban and he framed it. <laughs> that is, dude, what a guy. And uh, that is me, cool. He gave me five out of five stickers. <laughs> And yeah, because he's local to you, right? Yeah. So um, I had to go pick up some turbo parts. He's like, dude, I got some stuff for you for your build. He told me like a year ago. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm ready to start mocking this stuff up. Can I come by and pick it up? He's like, yeah, sure. So let me show you what he what he gave me. Ooh. So, so this is uh, 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 air to water or water to air intercooler. Wow. So the blue pipes take your, from your turbo to your engine. And this here passes water to cool the charge. Where does that go? Somewhere in the engine bay. So I'm going to stick it like in front of the, the pulleys. So, so in that sends, it cools the air? Yes. So it becomes. It cools the exhaust air. I got you. No, intake air. Intake air. Okay. So well, it, the exhaust, you know, the air going into the turbo is coming from the exhaust isn't it so um this is compressed air from the turbo which is hot okay because when you compress air it gets hot right yep and this core in here will cool the charge down and then this goes into the engine to the throttle body that's so sweet, it, the air will be more dense you know yeah dude that's really cool he just had that laying around Okay. So the water that That's passes normal. through there okay. goes to this heat exchanger, which okay. I got to mount in the grill in the front. Cool. Helps so cool this even is, more. So a little radiator to try to get the air close to ambient as possible, you know? Yeah. And he just had that stuff. Yeah. So okay. he used to be, I guess he was into like turbo stuff. Okay. And all kinds of stuff. And he's like, dude, I have this. Um, it's brand new. You could have it. Um, that heat exchanger is from a, a Mustang Cobra or supercharged Mustang something or other. Mm -hmm. And then this inner cooler is good for like 600 horsepower. Okay. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. Is he still putting videos out? He hasn't in a while. Yeah. He's slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Kind of like me. Cool. <laughs> Really cool. What do you uh? What do you rate this beer? It's it's a different Ooh. style. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. Seven. Okay. I mean eight. Uh, yeah. I I I'd have to. I was gonna go. I was gonna go seven four. Okay. Seven four. It's it's uh. I'd have to have a couple of them. I'll give it my true rating. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of them. I mean, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then if we have time, I want to read you a bedtime story. Okay. The owl and the pussycat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. That works for me. I'll wait till after you finish that that quad and okay. maybe a few others <laughs> well let's fire it up yeah. what's going on everybody it's cody from motorcycle md and matt from how to motorcycle repair and welcome to episode 31 of the broken moto show this is a um collaboration that we do uh to get together drink beer and talk about motorcycles motors and um things that maybe go fast um and we try to 
tackle some questions that you guys have. Now, this show lives and dies off of your questions. So if you're watching this for the first time and you have just the smallest, tiniest question, send it in. You know, because we don't we, we read every email and we want to um, continue this show and we need you guys to keep this thing running. Um, uh, and yeah, so we just answer we try to help with your guys' questions. I wouldn't say that we answer them every time um, th- correctly, but we try to give you guys some insight um, from two different backgrounds when it comes to motorcycles and small motors and stuff. So, Matt, what is the email that they need to send in questions? That email is ask brokenmoto at gmail.com you're making model mileage pictures videos um you guys definitely know the million rules by now so yeah. um send that stuff in and our inbox is empty right now so is. please send some stuff in and i know with spring right around the corner it's going to get slammed yeah oh i'm sure i'm sure but that's okay oh man Very cool. So we have a couple questions to move through. Question one. Are we answering the trivia question first? Oh, yeah. I think it was. Oh, yeah. What was it? Uh, So the question was, what's the fastest production bike you can buy? I think. Uh, Okay. The answer is uh, the Dodge Tomahawk. Tomahawk. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it has the Viper motor in it. Okay. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's funny because that's, that was, that's like a sister question to the bike that I had um, posed a question about, about saying what car company also made a motorcycle and it was Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. And you just like hit a home run with backing <laughs> it up with this fastest bike. And I think you're totally right. Um, they claim that that thing can go 300 or 400 miles an hour. And I'm just like, what? I don't know if I believe that. And I don't think anyone has done it. Right. That would be insane. Right. Yeah. It's just a crazy ass motorcycle, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, dude. So I completely forgot to grab a trivia question. <laughs> okay. Well, I got one. Sweet. Hit it up. All right. Harley's first motorcycle. Mm. What did they use for a carburetor? It was makeshift. What did mm. they use to construct and build a carburetor? That's a great question. I don't have no idea. Cool. So, there you go. All right. Answer it in the comments yep. below, guys. Let us know what your answer is. So let's fire this up. All right. Let me get the first question. Go ahead. All right. Uh, hello guys. My name is Renzo. I'm from New York. Love the channel. I'm building an O2 Kawasaki ZR750 and the stock wiring makes the headlight only come on when it is running. Is there a way to bypass the circuit and have it turn on when key on? I have a nice LED headlight and I would like them to only come on with the rest of the lights when the key is on and bike off. Thank you guys. Cheers. I have attached some pictures. Um, so I, I can share the pictures in a second yeah. here and we can just go over it together. Um, but to answer his question, um, I'm assuming this motorcycle, this model has some kind of ECU or PCM or whatever that turns the, the relay on for this light. Correct. Right. So what he needs to do is uh, get rid of that trigger wire from the ECU mm-hmm. and then take a trigger from an ignition source source yeah. a 12 volt switched source right um what he has to watch out for also is they probably leave it off and until the starter buttons hit okay you know what i mean yeah there's got like, some there's got me a way to like cut it and then cut and it's because it they're, the idea is to use as much power as possible to start the bike. So like a lot of Hondas, people will have headlight problems. Could be cutting it, it goes back to the starter button because the starter button that is designed to kill the switch to the headlight or kill power to the headlight so that the starter can use whatever it can. And then as soon as you release the starter button, the headlight comes back on. And sometimes you can see some headlight problems with the starter button. So if, um, but he's running a, a LED 
light is not going to be too much power, you know? Right. So it might not make too big of a difference, but that's just something to think about as well. Um, is yeah, but you're, you're, you're totally right. You just run into a 12, 12 volt source. Um, if it has a, a relay, like a headlight relay, I'm wondering how he would run it back to the relay. So the relay would probably have a signal wire from the ECU. Right? Right. Like the switch wire. The switch wire, which is going to be hard to... A lot of times schematics won't point that kind of stuff out. Like this wire here is the headlight wire. It would just like go into the ECU and you're like, well, I don't know what it does in there. And yeah, we're, yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? So he'd have to find on your wiring schematic on, find the relay. Right. Right. And then figure out by tracing back, which one is going to be the signal which is probably, like you said, it could go to the ECU. Um, and like literally just trace out where it goes, find where the other ones go and say, okay, if one goes straight to the headlight, it's probably not that one. If one goes to the starter switch or one goes to the low beam switch, it's probably not that one. Um, you know, there should be like four wires total maybe for the relay. But once you cut that switch wire, it's not gonna come on at all. Because the ECU is telling it to turn, to come on once the ECU gets a signal from somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that could be like from a pulse or signal from the coil, like it could be from anything. So once you cut or once you take that wire out of the mix, the headlight's probably not going to come on at all. So I'm wondering if you can take that wire that's supposed to go to the ECU and just 12 volt power that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So instead of that wire waiting for the ECU to say, okay, go ahead and, and shut on, you take that same wire and say, okay, I'll run it off of the, like you said, the ignition switch, which are going to be some pretty thick wires, but that's what you want. So, yeah, I mean, or you can completely abandon yeah. the stock wiring and mm -hmm. wire in all new stuff. Yeah. And depending on this LED and how many, how many watts it consumes, uh, can you do it with straight wiring? Yeah. Maybe no relay is needed. You know, I don't know about LEDs nowadays for headlights. Right. I don't know. I mean, the relay helps it not flicker. Yeah. Or you're not sending a lot of current through your, your high and low switches mm -hmm. through the switches. You're, you're Correct. going straight to the bulb. Right. Um, so, but given that it's LED, it's probably, a third of mm -hmm. what was in there. So it might be okay. I, I don't know, but just something to consider. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You got, you got some pictures for us? Oh yeah. Uh, give me a second here. Why do you think he wants to have the light come on? Uh, he said, cause all his other stuff, all his other led stuff is on. So I right. guess he just wants it consistent. Okay. Hold on. I'm a little slow here. It's all good, man. God damn it. Blame it on the quad. Yeah, it's, I already finished it, man. You ready for another one? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. No. All right. You can see my screen now. Oh, wow. You got on the part. All right. Hold on. All right. So this is, this is before. Mm-hmm. All right. This is before. Let's see what else he's got here. So that's him. Awesome. And he's got a KX250, dude. It yes, looks like a, a 99 to 02 model given by the yeah. rear rotor. So I got one of these. I digs it. Um, nice. Oh, is that the same bike? Uh, the one behind me is an 05. No, his bike, the one he's standing beside. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so. So there it is. Wow. So he's got LEDs everywhere, as you can see, and he just wants yeah. to, uh, you know, I think that's it. Is that it? Go back to the other one. All right. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. 
So that was when he was doing the work on it. Yeah. So this is a stock headlight. Yep. Uh, we don't have a view of the new headlight. Right. What picture do you want to see? The one of the side shot. This one? Yeah. Where's this? Go back to the other one. Oh, okay. I was trying to find where the shock was. And it, it's it's down there. It's just you can't see it right in this right. picture. I'm like, dude, there's no shock. But <laughs> it's just floating. It's, it's right. Just, it's right here. It's the brake tube reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a, it's the hard piece of metal. Yeah, that's interesting. That that's he cut it. Yeah. You know what I always fear about when I see these kind of bikes? Imagine you know just you're at a stoplight, right? Yeah. The bikes rumbling. Someone pulls up beside you or a chick, and you're like, I'm going to do a freaking burnout, right? Yeah. Hit the gas. Your ass flies over that seat and just gets sucked right down into that rear tire. <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt, man. That would – it just it just freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. But maybe he'll put – I think it'd be, I think it would look really cool to throw a little fender on there, just a small little fender. It looks cool. Cool build, man. Yeah. A lot of work, brother. Done a yeah, lot of work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that he took it. Looks, looks painful, but um, I'm excited for you. Thing's probably loud, too. Yep. Yeah, he just gutted it, huh? That's yep. where the thing uh, went on there. Cool, man. But yeah, it looks completely different. Yeah. Very cool. I'd lo I love to hear it run. Yeah, send us a video, man. He's got pod filters on there. It's just let it rip, man. Very cool. All right. Carry on to the next question. Next email. All right. The next question is our beer fund. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's tell me a little bit about that. All right. So, guys, uh, if you enjoy the show and want to help us out by uh, possibly mailing us a beer or buying us a beer, yeah, uh, you can do so. We have a beer fund and um, we'll leave a link in the video description, but yeah, it's just a little, little thank you that you can send our way. Um, Cody, go ahead and acknowledge the people that uh, have contri contributed yes. this week. Yes, we have, we have some uh, awesome um, consistent givers on this thing. It's so cool. We got the fits. We got Justo as usual. Both of those two guys are, have been with us for a while now. We got Kristoff. I think mean, that's a new one. And Ethan, that may be another new one. Yeah, and I, the fits again. I think Ethan is the guy with the valve guide uh, story. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. I think. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, yeah. That's just um, a way that uh, these guys think that this content's fun, cool. And they see value in it, you know, and they want to throw us a bone. Another way to uh, also help us out is, I mean, there's a number of different ways. So we both run channels, YouTube, um, subscribing on those, sharing those videos is also very helpful, as well as another cool thank you is to just email us in with some more questions, right? Yeah. Like that helps us out big time because um, that's what we need. You know, so thank you guys so much for the donations, uh, Paul, for uh, sending us these delightful beers. Ding. And um, it means a lot. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah. So I'll take the next one. Yep. Um, this is an email from William. Reminds me of my brother. Uh, hey, guys, love the episode so far. So far, he says, so far. It could get worse. He's not quite sure yet. He's That's still, you know, up for debate. You guys rock. Thank you, William. Just an update for you. Okay, so I asked a question in episode three. It's a long time ago, Matt. Episode three. Yeah. We, we were just little babies in the broken motor, <laughs> in motor <laughs> show world. <laughs> My bike would not rev over 3,000 RPM. Well, after taking your advice, I replaced all of the card parts, put everything back to stock, and I still have the problem. Wah, wah, wah. I guess our advice did not help. Okay. It just refused to rev over 3,000 RPM. I went as far as taking the wire harness off the bike. 
stripping it down and checking every single wire in the harness. Still no joy. My last and final option was to replace the igniter, aka in the, CK, the CDI. As there is no test for this, um, and my only option was to replace it and hope for the best. I installed the new CDI, started it up, and bam, hit the throttle, revved up, no problem. It purred like a kitten. Said I would let you guys know in case someone else is having the same issue on their Kawasaki VN750. Thank you for all the help this far. Again, this far. <laughs> Anyways, um, so awesome. So we got uh, uh, our advice sucked. Um, it was not good advice. And uh, it caused him to dive in even deeper than he needed to. But after replacing the CD, which is a very hard part to diagnose, man. I yeah. Mean, especially if he's saying that there's no real test for it, which is totally true. Um, sometimes you just got to do that. I have to do that in the field all the time, all the time. Uh, on the old like F1, CBR F1s, they had a, a special tool. It's called a pinout box. Have you ever seen one of those? No. So it's like a box, maybe about uh, one foot by foot and a half. I'm sorry, one foot by half a foot, like by six inches. And it has a harness splitter. So literally you plug one end into the harness ECU. It's got like 32 pin connector. And then the other harness goes into the CDI. So it's literally a pin out box that has every, it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and take it all the way down to the bottom. Then it has all the numbers. And you just like match up and then you put your test lead in there and test that. Way more testing. That was in the 90s. Big old, big old box. Very expensive. But they stopped doing it. Like they just now it's like in the troubleshooting section of manuals, it's like test this, test that. If those don't pass, replace the ECU. And it sucks. So but if you're wrong, you you gotta pay for it? Either well, the shop does. Okay. The shop's paying for it. Right. And they're not gonna be happy because no. No, can't return no. that, right? Correct. Once you open an electrical part from Honda, you cannot return it. It does not matter what it is. Start a relay, relay. Sure. They they will not take back electrical parts. Sometimes you have a little a uh, little uh um you know free will with the uh sales rep. I mean the service rep. So like a, a, every establishment has like some kind of representative for their shop mm -hmm. and if you're really cool with him which we are we'll be like look man we tried this it didn't work what do you think you can do and he'll and you know he'll try to do what he can do but that happened to dave on a metro on a metropolitan scooter which because the charging system stuff is inside of the ecu it's all one unit besides the stator the, the stator is attached to the motor but the regular rectifier is built into the ecu and those things can be very difficult to diagnose, dude. I've spent days on Metropolitan scooters because of a weird thing. Like, it's just a very weird system that, like, it requires certain loads to allow it to function. Like, it needs the load from the fuel pump or it will not turn over. So it's just very, like, quirky, weird ECU things. And they replaced the ECU. And it still didn't work. And that's like $1,200. How yeah. much? 1200 Holy cow, man. Yeah. How much is this scooter? <laughs> the scooter he was working on? Not yeah. $1,200. <laughs> Maybe 500 400 Oh, my God, man. I mean, in the condition that it was oh, in. Oh, yeah, okay. Metropolitans are like $3,500 scooters. But, right. Man. Um, yeah. It can okay. be bad sometimes. So thanks for uh, emailing us back, though, William. Hearing you guys is, you know... um how you guys figured out a problem or whatever, or if we were helpful or if we were not helpful. Yeah. Nice to hear. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Let me do number three here. Do it. Uh, didn't get a name. I have a diagram. I have the manual. I am just need someone to look at the bike and tell me what wires plugged into the blue connectors. Where are they coming from on the inside of your headlight? I find that out. I'm in business. I can't tell from the manual where they're coming from. It appears there is no power going to the headlight, according to the manual. At least that's what I can see. 
It's a 2008 V Star 650 Silverado. All right. Well, I don't have the diagram. I don't have the manual. <laughs> um, um, did you search. find something? No. 2008 VN. What was it? VN. Uh, v Star. V Star. 650. V Star. Let's see if we can help him out. I think that he's. I don't know. Honda uses the, the blue wire for high beam uh, and a white wire for running light. Yeah, he's talking about blue connectors. Blue connectors? Uh, what wires plug into the blue? Well, oh, I, I, I have no idea. I don't, well, <laughs> I, I don't even understand the question. Like, what's wrong with this yeah. thing? He's just trying to find yeah, out wires. No. I, I don't know what he's trying to do. I think you're right. And I, I think I was feeling that same way when I read the question um because it's like well is there anything going wrong with the bike you know what I mean so like if you don't know what that plugs into is there anything like that's that's not working but he says it appears there's no power going to the headlight according to the manual at least that's what I can see but that doesn't make any sense because the headlight would obviously need power yeah right function so it's definitely getting power like they don't just build bikes without headlight power. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so 650 wire diagram. Share it. How do I do that? Throw it. Uh, so if you go to the bottom, it'll show you, you got that up arrow. It's a share screen. Okay. Let me get the naked picture of my wife off my background. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, please do. I'm just kidding. Um, or on, all right, so there it is. All right, so welcome to my world of Google. So here's a Yamaha 650 diagram. I don't know what year I put in 08 V star 650 wire diagram. Um, 1100 X. Why don't they just give me, give me what I want? 2000. That's too far off. That's eight years difference i would hit it but it's probably very similar though uh, you think but, eh, well, i don't know what's this one let's see what this one is this one no that's xs man that's okay. 70s i uh, said so this one i, I just go to 2000 let's just let's just go with right. that oh lord they want you to pay for it man oh lord i'm stuck I'm stuck. I came an X out of this. Look um, what you've done. Hit escape. Oh, it locked me in. Why can I? That's oh, crazy. Man. They won't even let you X out of it. It's like, no, this is where you need to get it from. All right, close your tab. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. I also can't see my tab because this is in the way. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. We'll do that. Bam. We're, we're, we're going to spend a maximum of about three more minutes on this question. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, <laughs> All black and white. Sweet. Excess. <laughs> hey, hey, see that wire? See this? Oh, wait. Which one? Go back to the one you had. Oh, what's this? Internal handlebar wiring? There's a blue connector. I don't know what it goes to. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? I don't know, man. It was a black, <laughs> it was a black and white one. This is, this is the life of a DIY guy, right? Yeah, here, that's, that's why we can't answer this question, man. I don't right. manual. Right. I also don't have the bike. Like, can anyone show me a picture of the bike? I'm just like, oh. That one right there. The, the this big one? Black, no, no, up one. This one? Yeah. Go to wire. Go to CSS wiring diagram with a little globe on it on, on your right. Uh, you see my mouse? No, you can't see my mouse. All right. Do you see the one I'm on right now? All right. Go go right. Uh -huh. Go right. Right. Go into the, Go right. This one? No, right. No, like move right more. All right. Now go down. Go down four inches. Oh. Go wiring diagram right there. Up, up. up right. Yeah, yeah. Click on that. That takes you to the source. And of course, they freaking want you to buy it. On the VMAX 1200. Oh, wait. All right. Sorry, dude. Cause that's an image that that links to the image where it's at but yeah dude this is all oh, crap okay i'm done yeah <laughs> it's enough of that oh my gosh oh no look at all that spam dude <laughs> okay well all right well <sighs> sorry guy okay well dude sorry man i don't i don't yeah. know what's going on yeah me neither we biffed. <laughs> uh, come back and maybe 
give us some pictures of the diagram, the manual, and tell us what the problem is. So yeah, therefore for sure. we can answer it. Cause right now I don't know, you know, um, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on. Let us know, man. Give us some pictures. Give us more to, 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 to help you. Cause we do want to help, but we yeah. just can't. So go ahead. All right. First, I'm going to open up another beer and it's this. Oh, you really did finish it. Yeah. A while ago. Come on, let's go, dude. <laughs> I'm halfway. Mad, mad. Halfway. Ooh. I, I was, I was really thirsty, I guess. All right. Well, anyway, I'm going to try this one here. Do it, man. I think that one's going to be really good. Yeah. I'm jealous of you right now. Yeah. I think that one's going to be really good. 7.2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, these, there's a lot of alcohol in this one. I can't believe you pounded it that fast. Yeah, I did pound it pretty fast. Like a, <laughs> Like a Coors Light, dude. Matt's head's getting like slowly hotter and hotter. <laughs> Trying to answer the yeah, question dude. about a headlight. <laughs> You're like, oh, man. Mm. All right. Did you drink uh, it yet? Yeah, I did. Sorry, my wife texted me. Uh, you know, I'm out here. She's on... Uh, uh, she's putting the kids to bed and my little one, four-year-old broke the Nintendo switch. I don't know Dude. how, but fuck. So bro, we just got one of those last week. Oh yeah. Yeah. He broke like the big boy, like the big, I, I don't know. I don't know what broke means, but I just got texted, <laughs> you know, <sighs> <laughs> You guys have plan on having kids at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, don't plan on having anything nice. Okay. <laughs> like nice cars, nice walls, uh, and all that paint you just did in your house. Uh, Forget it, dude. Yeah. It's going yeah. to shit. That's what I've heard, man. I've heard it. You know, but it's those moments like that. But then there's other, I've heard this again. Yeah. It, then yeah. It's just, it's, it's worth it, obviously. Well, you know what? Once you have kids, your perspective in life changes. Yeah. Like before kids is all about things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy this. And then it's like, dude, none of that stuff matters anymore. Right. You know, it, it just doesn't. I don't care. Yeah. Like I don't care about any of my belongings anymore. Right. You know, like if they screw stuff up. Yeah. I, 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 I get mad because of the labor I put into it for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, or you know, what's going to take to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, you just got to realize that it's, it's a lot different dude. Yeah. It's a lot you different. Know? I'm sure. So I'm sure. Yeah. We, 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 have, we plan on having kids. Um, but we just don't know. I'm like, we're not like being like, okay, here's a five year plan of what we want. Um, all of our friends have had kids. All of our family has kids. Everyone's got kids. Everyone asks why we don't have kids. Yeah, you're probably getting a lot of pressure, aren't you? Absolutely. And it's so <laughs> annoying, dude. It's so annoying. Because, yeah. like, who can, like, yeah, anyways, that, that's yeah. a completely different conversation. But um, we're just hanging 10, man, you know? Um, I think the deadline for me, I'd like to have kids before I'm 34. So what that looks like, I don't know. What it looks like for my wife. And that's what she wants to do. If we want to adopt, I don't know, you know, so I'm sure. down for whatever, but, um, yeah. So we just got to switch and I've been tearing that thing up, dude. <laughs> I've been tearing that thing up, you know, at, at night I'm just like, I got this big thing in my face. I'm just like playing before I go to sleep. I, I like Zelda. I, I grew up with Zelda. Yeah. So any of you game nerds out there, Zelda is, is my jam and this one's just really cool. So nice. Yeah, Jackie got yeah. Animal Crossing. Yeah, my kids play that. Okay, and then uh, they they play online with my sister. Okay, so um, we got that in Super Smash Brothers. That's a good one. Gotcha. Yeah, that's like I don't care, dude. I <laughs> I just you know what I've been doing, dude. I've been binging uh, Cobra Kai lately. 
Really? A yeah. binge-worthy show? Never thought it would equal Cobra Kai. I have not started that one yet. Okay. I'm like, for some reason, I think it's going to be cheesy. So are you gonna, are you telling me right now that it's not cheesy? It It is... It is a little cheesy, but it's okay. it's good. Okay. It's good. Um I watched uh the karate kid, mm -hmm. the original one with my with my kids like a week or two ago, just because why not? Like mm -hmm. we did a movie night. Uh and they were into it. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, someone was telling me about Cobra Kai. I gotta watch that. So yeah. Um yeah. You did send me a text last week saying, Bro, the end of Ozark. Holy shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt too. Yeah. That's good. So we're um I think last Sunday was the last episode of uh uh WandaVision. Mm hmm Have you seen any of that? I watched the first one. I didn't really like it. Okay. It does it get better or so or... dude, so okay. Yeah, yes. So sorry guys, we're doing a little sidebar right now. Yeah. Okay. Cause we don't have a lot of questions and this is what you're gonna listen to deal with it <laughs> um so the first two or three episodes you're like what is this right you're like yeah. i don't want to watch this whole season in black and white right and this just seems really weird bro watch two episodes i think maybe the third episode you're gonna be like holy crap this is genius this is production genius the way that that, that, that they flip it on its head and then you're like, what? Like, because every new episode, you're like, wait, what era are they? Dude, I, I'm just telling you, give it a chance. Okay. The guys, who, whoever directed this or had the idea to do this deserves an award. Yeah, cool. Really, really interesting motorcycle stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. All right. So I think you grabbed that number three. So let's go to number four. Um, is this yours or mine? I'm gonna take this because you just grabbed oh, yeah. the guy. And we yeah, didn't okay. Know. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. No problem. All right, guys. So, uh, episode uh, question four. Uh, hi, Matt and Cody. I need help. Dot dot dot. I got a KX250. This is all you, Matt. A 1995 last year in a box. Everything was apart. Every seal and bearing out of the engine and frame was in a box. So after, I, I hope you paid less than a hundred dollars for that bike. So after a lot of head scratching, uh, reading manuals and watching Matt's videos, shout out, which are awesome in parentheses, I finally got it built. I sent the head and piston away to get bore, bored out and replated. Every seal and almost all bearings in the engine have been replaced. The clutch rod that goes through the engine into the top hat bearing was, I was told there was a metal ball in it which of course was lost before i got the bike so i've managed to get a ball to fit in the clutch to work but by any chance do you guys know what size the, the ball should be anyway on to my main question uh when i took the bike out for the test ride it drove through the first gear okay but after clicking up into other gears it felt like the clutch was slipping nice easy fix new clutch plates but when i let the throttle off the when i sorry but when i let the throttle off the back end lock up installs the engine bike starts fine and drives fine in first gear what do you think it could be before i pull the engine i let the throttle so keyword i let the throttle off off the back end lock that's really odd, right? Yeah. So, so he, so when he shifts it into second and lets the clutch out with throttle, it just stalls. The bike stalls, but it drives fine in first gear. What do you think before I pull the engine? So he said easy fix. He replaced the, the clutch plates, but that didn't fix the problem. When I took the bike out for the test run, I drove through first gear okay, but after clicking up to other gears i felt like the clutch was slipping which means now he's in a second gear third gear and the bike's not moving or it's just the bike's revving up real high and the bike's not moving um nice easy fix new clutch plates but when it's, i let the throttle off so to me it sounds like he didn't do the clutch plates yet he's just assuming that's the fix 
Okay. Right? But what's odd is he goes in a second or whatever. Yeah. And if he, he tries to goose it, it slips, but then he lets off and it locks up, which is which is really odd. Right? Very is odd. That, is that how I'm reading it, it? It doesn't add up. So I can't see you guys. I don't know about the ball. You know, you know, you know anything about the ball? Okay, so there there's a ball. Okay, so the the clutch, I know what it's for. Yeah. So the clutch uh, lever is on the left side of the yeah. of the bike, and you got a rod that goes over to the right side to push the pressure plate out. And yeah. somewhere in that arrangement, there's a ball. Yeah. A little ball uh, bearing. Yeah, it's a ball bearing. It's it sounds like you just got any ball and threw it in there, <laughs> um, but you should get the right oem ball because yeah. it's it's a certain distance and all that so that matters i would be less concerned about what size the ball is and just trying to find the correct ball just order the correct part because if yeah. you're trying to, for us to figure out what size the ball is so you can like no. make one or find one similar just buy the it's probably you know even if it's expensive it's it's probably five bucks you know, it costs like 20 cents to make, but no, get yeah. the right OEM ball. Yes. Uh, put it in there. Um, but okay. So it's slipping. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's slipping because you, the, the ball's too big and you're releasing the pressure plate a little bit, you know? Right. Um, so anyway, get the right ball in there make sure you have the right clutch lever free pit play. And then test to see if it's slipping again. Okay. Yeah. If it's slipping then, then yeah, your plates and springs should be replaced and all that good stuff. Um, but what I don't understand is when you let off the throttle, the back end locks up. That's weird. I I, I can't I can't explain that one. I felt like the clutch was slipping. But when I let the throttle off. Oh, you know what might be happening is he's goosing it. It is slipping constantly. And, that's and then the and then he lets off the throttle and the bike just dies. Right. The engine dies. The clutch is trying to grab. Yes. So the bike dies. And then when the bike is dead, it's somehow just uh, the clutch is no longer slipping. It locks everything up. Right, because once it gets to a lower RPM, if the clutch can grab, it's going to try to grab. Right. Okay, that so, makes sense. But Yeah, it does. So the ball could be throwing this off, but I think he needs to really, really pay attention to the way that his adjustments are, right? His free yeah. play up at the lever, just like you said. The free play at the lever and where it goes into the case. Is this a two-stroke? Yes. Okay. So is the adjustments inside of the case like you pull the cover off and now you have an adjustment or uh no work? there's there's two adjustments on the cable okay so there's a there's one down uh like over here on the other side yeah and then there's one up at the the perch and um it's just adjusting it's like a cable going into a case where it's uh, where it has like a ball in and it connects to a lever right yeah there's an external lever Okay, and that cable itself that's going into the case, that's adjustable? Uh, yeah, there's there's a course adjustment down there, Okay, if you will, uh, so a barrel adjustment down there. Do you have a, any good advice for him to set that? To like set it, like, how would you set it all up? Clutch is perfect. You have a brand new ball in there. It's perfect. How would you start and how would you finish? Okay, so everything's connected, right? Yep. Uh, at the perch, I like to run the barrel all the way in. Okay. And then down by the cable, I will take like 80, 90% of the slack out down there because I consider that like a course adjustment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So down there and then and then you fine tune it up at your perch. Yeah. yeah I, I think he has a major adjustment issue. I think there's a high potential that he absolutely fried his clutch at this point already. That could be very possible. 
um, just due to a lack of movement. If your clutch lever uh, grant goes and you release it, boom, all, like hand off the clutch, you pull it in and you release it. And that thing just goes whack and just slams right back in, into place. Take your clutch apart. Because you probably ruined it by now. Yeah, and I'm wondering why it's stalling. Like, is it not running correctly? Because, I mean, if it's slipping and you let off, it should the engine should just I, return to idle unless you're moving very slowly. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, get this clutch taken care of. Yeah, you got something form. weird going on. Get, get the right stuff and then get back to us. Let us know what you find. Oh, he has a here before and after picture. Yeah, let me share those. Yeah, do it. Oh, dude, hold on. I'm so sorry. Are you still liking that Abbey Ale? Yeah, it's really good. Wait. I'll do the same one. All right. So there it is. There it is. (laughs) Threw it all in the trunk. Dude, look at. Is that a? Are those the factory graphics? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I'll just say that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, this is a ninety-five. No, it should have like. Oh, I don't remember. My buddy had an eighty, a ninety-five eighty. Uh, I don't know what the two fifty. Here's a fun look. question: Can you name what type of vehicle that is? Looks like a Subaru, right? It looks like a Subaru. It looks like a like an earlier Forester, but we can't tell. Also, no license plate on the. Oh wait, maybe it's attached to the hatch. Never mind. Okay. And Sorry. Next picture. So this is the next one. Oh, dude, that's killer. So, um, so that oh the clutch. Uh, see, it's right here. The cable. Yep. And it's the just, rust. It's just like a CR. Yeah, the the rough adjustment is is somewhere in this area right here, or yeah. it might even be up here. I forget. Um, and then of course you got your fine adjustment up here. I will right. pause and say, congratulations, because you saw guy you you guys saw what the pictures were before. Yeah, it was like cancer sitting in the back of of, of a vehicle, and now he has this. So you've come a very long way, you know, and right. uh, to get things wrong is totally normal. To misadjust is totally normal. And I just want to congratulate you on the product that you've now presented to us. And with an image, happy clap for this guy, because that's, that's big moves, man. That's not a lot of people can do that. And you, and you should be proud of yourself. Um, and I, I, I will say that I'm proud of you for, you know, getting it to where it is now. So, yeah. And dude, working with the clutch is cake at this point, because all you got to do is pop that side that that, this cover right here. It's like, it's like six bolts. The plates are easy. You got the rod, you got the ball and you got a cable that that's, that's the issue here, which is dude, an hour job, right? Right. You're, You're, you're looking at, I think you could probably fix it faster than we can talk about it, honestly. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so hopefully, like, if you were to get it up on the stand right and then he can shift it, hopefully he can get it to shift through all the gears. Yeah. That's what I'm also curious about. Like, if he mistaked five for a two counter shaft, I, I don't know. I feel like it just would not shift past a certain gear if he got transmission stuff wrong, you know? Right. Um. Well, hopefully you're, you're able to shift past a gear, whatever the case is. But so yeah. it, it's, it sounds like he bought my rebuild video and cool. it, in that video and actually in all my rebuild videos, what I like to do is I put the case halves together. I put the shifter stuff in there yeah, and I ram it through the gears before Good. going any further. Good. Because dude. What happens when you keep going and going, you yeah. put it in the bike and all of a sudden it won't shift. It looks like this and then it won't shift it past second. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> how, how, sh- how would you feel about that? So you, you want to make the sure. Gasoline can. <laughs> you want to make sure 
you go through all the gears. So I'm assuming he followed that and everything's cool. So he's just dealing with a clutch issue here. So mm -hmm. I think it's more simple than we think. So yeah, Paul, again, I'm going to reach out to Paul. Thank you for this Abby ale. It's very good. It's very, uh, I would say it's, it's got some, uh, earthy tones to it, you know, nice, uh, acorn feel on the, on my tongue. Um, if that makes sense. I don't know. It just tastes earthy to me. And I kind of, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yeah, it's good, man. Cool. So last question, last email. It's all you. All right. I watch videos on pullers and all seem to have issues with stuff breaking. What's your method of removing bearings or what puller do you use? Thanks, Ted. Good question, Ted. Um, do you think his name really is Ted or do you think it's Teddy? Or do you think it's just straight Ted? I like think someone named their kid just Ted? Or uh, is, it a, is it a surname for Barnabas? I'm not sure, man. Okay. I've never, I've met Ted's before. I've also met Teddy's, but Teddy, I feel like is a far stretch from Ted. You know, like Teddy, hey, Teddy, like no one's going <laughs> to, you know what I mean? Yeah. No disrespect, Ted. I'm, this I, is I just a know. question that I have. Ted, it's just, Ted seems like a name for something else. It's a short for something. What's the one for Dick? So you got Dick. It's Richard. Richard. Yeah. Yeah. I got a friend that's Richard and we just call yep. him Dick. <laughs> my last name's Richards and my pop-up went by, my grandfather went by Dick. His name is Richard. My dad's name is William, but he goes by Bill, which so is a whole other weird conversation that I literally just had with someone the other day. So his name was this... Richard Richards? <laughs> no, Richards oh. Cohe would be my oh. mother's a maiden name. Wait, yeah. Okay. Back to Ted. <laughs> <laughs> you got me confused, man. <laughs> Ted, let us know, man. What's your real name? <laughs> oh, I got to piss. <laughs> All right. So what kind of pullers do you use? So we use one sent to us from Honda. You know, um, if we're talking like slap hammer puller, you know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Honda makes ones that um are we are we that, talking are we talking about blind bearings? I think so. I think that's what we're talking about, right? Because well, if you're pulling anything, it's gonna be letting you guys know Matt's giving this away. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, I got something like that. So I mean yeah. most I've seen something like that. Most common on motorcycles, you're going to be dealing with a blind bearing. So what this is, is this collet. And when you tighten it, this guy expands. Right. And it, there's a lip on there and it, it grabs yep. the inner race. Yeah, so there's, there's like a plug that goes in the center and it kind of expands that out to grab on to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then you just slap that whap, out. Whap. So yep. who's that from? Uh, this is a tusk. Tusk. Okay. And do you feel like it's worth the money? Um, yes. Have you had success with it? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing is the smallest one is an eight millimeter. Okay. And I, I wish that it had a six millimeter one. Okay. Yeah. See, um, have that. Yep. Because like on this, on, on, motors on dirt bikes you got the water pump mm -hmm. and the governor bearings that are tiny tiny, tiny. as hell dude yeah. and you know what i have to do is i heat the cases to like 250 degrees and i slam yep. them hard on the workbench i know until that thing just pops out and yep. it works um but man that's that sucks you know i wish it does suck i wish i had it on here yeah without like yeah it's like special order or something and then you need like maybe some other tools with it um, Dude, even if you Google it, I cannot yeah. even find one. Jesus. And okay. then if I don't even know if they, yeah. Yeah. 
I know I totally get it. So, well, what I was going to say is Honda sends us very similar stuff to that, Matt, but it's not like I saw like yours were four, four finger. Like, yeah. Where Hondas are like six or seven. So very, very thin fingers, a bunch of them all mixed up. They had the lips on the end of them and you, it's the exact same thing. Um, but just like five times as expensive. Yeah. So this kit was like 60, 70 bucks. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There. Well, and, well, yeah. <laughs> I got all kinds, man. This is this, sure. this I got for free. So, I mean, you need them. Yeah. So that that's for something like pulling a bearing off of a crankshaft or um, something like that. I have a craftsman um puller okay which works pretty good uh but as far as whatever combination you do there is i would say that there's there easily is no perfect puller yeah you know what i mean like usually whenever i've used a puller a bearing puller what did you call it um a blind blind Bl puller a blind bearing puller blind bearing puller even with that, you can have the perfect tool and you still need some extra zhuzh to help it come out. And that's either heat, like what Matt said. I I try to heat that stuff up whenever I can. It just makes your life easier. It makes it saves the tool, honestly. Yeah. Obviously, you're worried about the case, um, but you're not going to hurt the case. The case is usually a uh, very, very thin metal. Um some kind of pot metal magnesium aluminum mix or aluminum case or whatever it is. And uh, it's going to heat up very quick. If you, if you like the hotter, you can get it faster, I think is the better. So Matt puts it in the oven, puts it on the grill, whatever. If you can get two hot butane blow torches on that thing, you know, just, and just heat it up quick. Sometimes they'll just fall out. You know what I mean? Um, but that's a big dilemma, I would say, is finding those inside. And you can spend $300, $400 on some, but again, I would still use heat with it every time. Yeah, there's no one size no. fits all polar. I mean, it seems like every time you come across something, it's a different setup. Yeah. Um, so he wasn't too specific on right. uh, what he needed. But hopefully that gives um, them some, some advice. Yeah. And and what sucks is like um, I was doing a blind needle bearing. Mm. I actually have a video on this. That sounds like clutch shifter stuff or like clutch uh, pivot stuff. It, it was a YZ250F yeah. and it was the balance shaft needle yeah. bearing. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it was – so what I actually had to do is collapse the cage – Ruin it completely. Yep. Ruin the inside and pull the needles out. And now you have this little lip. Yep. That you hope to God doesn't break because yeah. then you're really screwed. So what I did is I heated the shit out of the case. Yeah. And then I used the blind bearing puller to get on the lip and just nice and easy. And it, and it came out, thank God. But man, right. if that lip broke, I would have been screwed. Absolutely. Absolutely. That thing was in there tight, dude. And Honda yeah. does not mention that in a the manual. They will not. It's a safety issue. Yeah, you're Heat using to uh, 200 degrees and it'll fall right out. No, they're gonna be like, you know, it's a pull it out with it, this tool. It's a legal issue, man. Anytime Absolutely. you would tell someone to take a blowtorch or fire or whatever Absolutely. to something, <laughs> Absolutely, you're asking for trouble, dude. Um, dude, I just did all this. Yeah, I did it in a press, but I still used a little bit of heat. Yeah, because it just goes in so nice. You like um, you can put pressure on, on like an armor press or like a regular hydraulic press put pressure on like a wheel bearing or something like that and it won't move right you're like oh this is sketchy you know what i mean yeah but then you heat it up and it just goes yeah. and just, it just drops down boom yeah uh, but i did a bonehead move is uh these needle bearings had a piece of foam in okay. in the id to keep all the needles in place oh. i i had it all set up and i'm <laughs> heating it and it just melted all that foam and i'm like oh dude i had to clean all that shit out dude why is it smoking so much 
Why does it smell like? <laughs> it smells like plastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool man. But no, I, it was easy to clean out. Thank God. So yeah, good dude. Anyway, well, did you finish that can? Was that an empty can you just heard? Yeah, bro. <laughs> you have a much better tolerance than I do. No, <laughs> no, I don't know about that. So let's go ahead and wrap this episode up. We need your wait. I got to tell you my bedtime story. Oh, I think. No, no. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So with everything going on with Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head, I feel this story is appropriate. And um, wait, wait, wait. What's the other one? Who's this? Uh, Mr. Potato Head and then Dr. Seuss. Are you talking about the cancel culture? Uh, No. No. What are you talking about with Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato I, Head? I guess some of his books – Okay, uh, the cancel culture. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they're sorry. also doing that to, to Pepe Le Pew. Okay, well, they're just they're just hitting everything up, all right. But let yep. me let me just read you this. I can't wait. The owl and the pussycat. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Is the owl a rapist? Go go ahead and tell me. <laughs> all right, wait. This. The, the copyright's eighty four, but I think this is a redo. Obviously, the originals. <laughs> okay. Uh, the owl <laughs> and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note the owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar oh lovely pussy oh pussy my love what a beautiful pussy you are you are, you are. Right there. Huh. Yep. 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 <laughs> what a beautiful pussy you are. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> oh, and then, you know, it just keeps going. It gets weirder and weirder, you know. You just... <laughs> a great bedtime story and just repeating that word over and over. Uh, it's like you're going to read your sh- toddler. Yeah, and... You know, I remember uh, <laughs> when my kids were real little, I was I was reading that because, dude, we got tons of books, right? I was reading mm-hmm. that, and then I'm like, I was too tired to even like, like think about like what the hell I was reading. <laughs> I was know? like, pussy, pussy, pussy cat, <laughs> pussy. I love you, pussy. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that's that's good, man. Thank you for that. So there you Thank go. You yeah. Now so you, they're, they're all they're also it. canceling Pepe Le Pew. Okay. Because he's pretty much like a rapist skunk. <laughs> like he was constantly berating women who were either pretending to be skunks or they're female skunks, and he was like forcing them to, <laughs> to hold them and hug them and kiss them when they did not want it. And he's pretty much like a nasty old rapist skunk <laughs> they're canceling them oh, like because because everybody's watching pepe Le pew obviously and everyone's yeah. buying apparel everyone's buying yeah sure whatever but i haven't heard that name in what 15 20 years yeah but whatever be gone with it uh, if it makes them right. happy be gone with it so matt this is a long episode but yes dude i had to piss so bad all right, let's just let's just wrap it up, dude. Thank you guys so much for sending in your emails and getting in contact with us. Hopefully, we were able to help you guys out in some way. If you guys have any questions about your motorcycle, ATV, lawnmower, weed whacker, whatever it is, send us an email. Matt orders that email one more time. It's uh, ask bro- askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. Yes. There's a million rules. You know them by now. Yep. Just uh, our inbox is empty, so just send us some stuff. We send them. Some- we need them. Otherwise, we won't have an episode, okay? So let us know what you got. Paul, again, thank you for the beer. Meant a lot. And um, we'll see you guys next time. That's right. Later. Later. Thank you.